<laughs> All right, here we go. All right, go ahead and go. Hello, this is Oscar. And this is Kaya Frazier. And let's do it again. You know what? We all went to this anyway. Yeah. Let's, let's have it's fun. It's all good. Right? Just have fun. <laughs> all right. Hi, I'm Oscar Frazier. And I'm Kaya Frazier. And you're listening to The Jeff Smith Show on Room Room Beer. Perfect. It's Room Room Beer right? with Jeff Smith, but that's okay. Let's try that again. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Hi, this is Oscar Frazier. And this is Kaya Frazier. And you're tuned in to the Room Room Veer Show with Jeff Smith. Watch out. Buckle up. Buckle up. Ah! (laughs) Join our chip show, right? (laughs) Well done. Buckle up. Buckle up, buttercup. All right, I'm going to hit stop. I'll be right back. Uh Perfect. Are you ready to thoughtfully steer away from your revved up, frenzied, and far too often scripted life? Then welcome to Vroom Vroom Veer with Jeff Smith, where he guides you down the road differently traveled by sharing unique experiences with guests who have managed to shift away from a life stuck on cruise control and veered their way into a more authentic and fulfilling one in all sorts of interesting and kind of remarkable ways. Get ready to Vroom Vroom Veer with your differently traveled road chauffeur jeff smith francis papalardo thank you so much for being on vroom vroom veer and welcome to the show how's it going it's going thanks for having me all right it's going that's a perfect answer for where you are in your life (laughs) so talk a little bit about uh what you're most excited about in life your business your url is customize your dot life, which is pretty cool. I like that. The dot life domain. So Thank you. yeah, whatever you want to say about that, <laughs> go ahead and do that. Oh yeah. You know, our, our business is, um, our business is in a great place and, and we're just, we're just so thankful for the momentum and the growth that we're seeing in it. Our, our business is essentially about helping people customize their life based upon their values. And so it goes much deeper than that, but that's the baseline to it. Right. And right now we're right now we're really experiencing that that feeling, you know, if you've ever if you've ever gone surfing or you you just sat and watched the waves in the ocean, right? And you see where it kind of recedes a little bit, it builds and then it starts to crash. And so we've really felt that building and we're starting to crash with that exponential growth and momentum. Ooh, okay. And it, it's it it feels it feels feels, wonderful. feels like you're kind of leveling up and at the this yeah. moment. Well, yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's quite contrary to what we're experiencing in our personal life. Right. Um, we haven't necessarily personally been able to be the main drivers behind our business right now. My husband is currently overcoming cancer and it's right. been a quite a journey over the past year. Yeah. So, um, it, it, yeah. So it, it's been all really, <laughs> all, all the feels, of all the feels, all, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> I'm wearing it like a robe, but uh, it's uh, you know it's just been such a testament to the to the team that we have that we're working with and how they've really just taken taken the helm and charged forward and and we're so proud That's of everybody. Amazing. That's Come amazing. On. Yeah, you know you're doing something right when you can leave and things don't go all shitty. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes that that in and of itself could be a story all all all, all together by itself. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that to me, kind of like the key of the, 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 the yeah. definition of success, right? When your business totally. is in you, yeah. when it outlasts you, when it doesn't need you, then right. you've done something right because you've built people right. and the people sustain the businesses. Right. It's not the business that sustains the people. Right. That's amazing. Well said. Yeah. That's what, uh, that reminds me of Ferris when he, when he was all stressed out mm-hmm. and decided to go to wherever the, where, where, some trip, like, in Asia, yeah. right? And he, he assumed his business would be thoroughly wrecked. And then he came back and everything was amazing. <laughs> Nobody knew you were gone, boss. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Right. That's it. Right. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> later on, not right away, we're going to talk about when you were, uh, your daughter recently interrupted a podcast and how <laughs> all sorts of hilarity ensued. And then uh, on a sadder note, um, There was a story about when you were in fifth grade and you got invited to a dance and things didn't go the way you thought they would. Yeah. So, but those, okay. I'm looking forward to that (laughs) because stories from fifth grade are few and far between. I'd have Hmm. to think really hard about fifth grade for, for me to come up with a story. I I don't remember fifth grade. (laughs) Okay. So go ahead. 
it was a memorable year for me. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. I think, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to save my comments for when we talk about it. So th well, that's good. That's like a double tease. <laughs> All right. So talk a little bit about like you before 2008, because we all heard the story about, you know, when your father died and mm -hmm. that trauma and the grief and the loss and how that transformed you. But who were you before that? You know, any any place ah. on that. So I knew you went to college. You were going into the entertainment industry. So talk a little bit about you before 2008. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a lot, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you know, I um, I was like any other kid growing up that just wanted to uh, have fun and, you know, pursue their dreams. And, you know, I, my family moved around a lot. My father was in the military. Oh, wow. uh, I, know, I know your air force or right. former air force. And, right. and thank you. Thank you for your service. My, my father was a civilian army. My wow. brother as uh, air force, both gr grandfathers in the army. So we are a military family. That's awesome. And a very, very, very appreciative for your wow. service. It's almost uh, like you serve too. If you were like a military kid, Yep. It's like you were in, really. <laughs> Maybe not quite as difficult as what you had to do. Oh, right. I don't know. I probably, did, probably never did as many push-ups as you or uh, face the things. I was in the Air Force. Come on. We don't do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> we ride the bike. <laughs> no, they changed it. I'm sorry. That was just for fun. For a while there, we did just ride the bike. Really? <laughs> yeah. Our fit test was just this ergonomic... It was really very scientific where they like measured your VO2 ox level or something. And oh, then wow. what, well, what happened was all Air Force people got really optimized at riding a stationary bike. That doesn't really make you fit for being mm. on deployment. <laughs> but you are really good at riding a stationary bike. What happens when the bike's not there? Correct. Right. Yeah. Right. No. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was already fit before they made this bike test, right? So then yeah. they make the bike test and I, I didn't do well on it. Right. Oh. And thankfully I was, I was given a, like a couple of practice tests because I was going to be the test monitor for the unit. Yeah. Hmm. And, and I realized that I, I was like, why am I doing so poorly on this? I run all the time. I'm fit. I work out. What, what is it? And she's like, Oh no, you have to ride the bike to make do good on this test because you have to build up your quads and your hams, right? Because if you yeah. don't ride a bike all the time, your body's gonna freak out and your heart rate's gonna go up. So she's hmm. like, just ride a stationary bike and a couple of months, you'll pass this test with flying colors. And I'm like, that's stupid. <laughs> that's so interesting. Right? It's that's so interesting, because it is a different muscle group for people that aren't used to riding bikes. You could be very fit yeah. and well on a bike. What happened was the Air Force was, had like some people drop dead because they were like they could go and like do zero fitness all year and then they would make them do an annual fit test and run a mile and a half in, in a certain amount of time. So people would just like do nothing, show up and drop dead. Okay. Like that fitness test. On a fitness not, test. Not yes. There was a fitness. certain percentage above zero of people wow. taking their annual fitness test. So they're like we have to stop killing our people because <laughs> any number <laughs> above zero is wrong, right? That should not happen, oh. right? <laughs> so that's how we got the bike test. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know, the bike test lasted long enough for, for us to realize that we needed to encourage people to um, be fit all the time. So that eventually happened. Yeah. So, so did you all have bikes in your room or was there like... <laughs> And this is like this. I'm, I'm a very practical, logistical yes. person. Yeah. Think about, so how many bikes were available to you guys at any given time? to go Well, the, the gym on most Air Force bases and military bases is open 24 seven and it's filled with all the all the exercise bikes and the every every cardio thing you can imagine. But how many bikes? Because any like hundreds of people running More at the same spin time. class. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, but you were doing all of that on your own, right? That like, was all on your own time. You weren't doing that. You weren't riding a stationary bike as a group. Yeah, but there were thousands of you on base probably. And, yeah. you know, on any given lunch break, there were hundreds of you that there, probably wanted to ride your bike. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it was, it was crowded in the gym. Yeah. 
how dependent you were on a piece of machinery <laughs> to pass your test. You couldn't just like do push-ups in your right. in your room. You had to get right. on this bike. Fascinating, interesting. Yeah. Never did that. A regular bike worked too, though. It didn't have to be a stationary bike. So some people rode a bike bike on their own kind of thing. So they would they would do okay too. As long yeah. as you're doing a bike-like move. Wow, we, that's an awesome tangent. I love this show. <laughs> I think I need to invest in these bikes, man. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's right. a lot. <laughs> okay, so let's talk, let's get on into a little bit of, like, identity or, like, yeah. because I, I, I think the way that you present, you and Tony both, the way you guys present yourself online all the time is very authentic to me. Um, mm -hmm. But I bet you weren't always like that. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about what that was like and when that happened and when you no, realized you wanted to be more authentic with yourself, with others, with Tony. And yeah, yeah thanks like, for asking. That. Okay. Yeah. I like that question because <laughs> when I started doing it, it was amazing. Mm, yeah. Thanks for making me think about that because I, I love reflecting on those things and, and you know, so I know when the shift for me occurred, but when I look at, when I look at my entire life, I think about coming into this world, you're a kid, you're authentic when you're right. a child, yes. right? My, yes. my three-year-old couldn't be more authentic. That's she is, true. <laughs> she is emotive. She says everything that's on her mind. Right. Sometimes it's embarrassing when we're in public, yes. but mostly hilarious. Thoroughly unfiltered. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So what happens? You start getting conditioned. You start right. changing. You want to start to be accepted, School. right? You know, being in a military family, we did move around a lot. And so I went from suburban Kansas city to a small town in Alabama during one of our moves. And, um, that's where I started to get picked on and made fun of. And I got made fun of a little bit in Kansas city as well. I think when you don't went, I think sometimes what happens if you don't grow up in the town that you right. live in, okay. you don't have all these established friendships before you go to school, you're automatically the odd man out. And okay. kids don't know what to do with that sometimes. You're the so new kid. I was the new kid. I was a new kid in Kansas when I got right. there. I was a new kid in Alabama when I got there. Alabama mm -hmm. was a little bit more rough because it was a cultural shift right. as well from the clothes I was wearing to the way that I sounded. Right. And uh, you know, I was just the foreigner in, in, the, in the school. And so I started getting conditioned. I started getting made fun of. I started, uh, you know, um, figuring out how to react to, to, the, to those, those things in my environment. Because right. for some reason, I had this instinctual wisdom that I knew that when those kids were making fun of me, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't personal. I knew that somehow. I don't know if my parents wow. told me. That. I just, I knew it. And okay. because... Because in large part, the things I was getting made fun of for in Alabama were actually cool in Kansas. So <laughs> I, I connected those dots, you know, wow. it, it, and I said, OK, this I just I just got cool in Kansas and now I'm doing the same thing over here and now I'm getting made fun of. So what? So I knew it was groupthink. I knew it was cultural. Right. It didn't have to that's do with awesome. me. Actually, that's a really beneficial thing that happened to you, really, when you think about it. it yeah. Like, it, if you would have stayed in one place, you would have thought you were cool the whole time. <laughs> I would have thought everybody else in the world was crazy. I love New Yorkers and I'm, I'm, I've lived in New York for the last 10 years and I have so many deep rooted friendships there. I love the people, but it's always hilarious to me because New Yorkers sometimes are the most uh, I don't know if the word's prejudice, but like they always, you you hear like, ah, anything that's outside of New York, it's like, ah, what do people even do there? Like, ah. <laughs> I know that feeling, yes. You've that's, never been very... there, you've never even been there. <laughs> right, right. And yet that, that happens a lot in the different neighborhoods in and around Los Angeles. Yeah. So like, yeah. I, I always sort of assumed anybody, cause I grew up in a very small town in Michigan so like, like same people from, yeah. you know, birth all the way till I was 18 and joined the Air Force. And then I saw what the world was. Right. Yeah. So I always sort of assumed as, as a small town kid that all big city people are smarter and more worldly than me. And mm -hmm. that is not true. <laughs> that is not true. So the L.A. people like, are you familiar with L.A. at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. So like I spent all of my time like around South Bay in Torrance in the beach cities. Yep. Okay. 
because that was sort of close to the Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And then later on, after I retired, I, I went and did massage school up in the valley, like around Studio City. Okay. And all those valley people knew absolutely nothing about Torrance <laughs> or the South Bay. They were like, that may as well be another planet. <laughs> And that was yeah. surprising to me. They had never, ever, they didn't even know the 110 went that far south. It was like, <laughs> what is that, like Pedro? <laughs> and I'm like, kind of, not really, no. Yes, yes and yeah. no, yeah, right. Yeah, it, yeah. It was interesting waking up. Okay, so talk a little bit more about, like, how you, like, had that sort of, like, okay, now this is what it's like being um authentic with myself yeah. right yeah so so that sh that those conditioning layers did start to happen because i was trying to figure right, out how right, right. It. what do i do do i be myself do i be what they want and yeah. oh. it was a little bit of a tug of war because as a kid you do want to be accepted but then you totally. also want to be yourself you know right. so it was like a it was a positive tension in my life and um you know I think I made it all the way through high school being very authentic because I, 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 really? I figured out how to get that polarity to work, work Where in you, my life. You're kind of like, you you have this awareness that now I'm doing this to fit in. Right. Yeah. A yeah, little so bit. I, right. Like see, I'm, I'm giving them a little bit of what they need. Right. But you have yeah. that awareness, right. That's, I did. that's huge. I did. Yeah. So I, I would say like I stayed, true all the way through high school. And then I became less authentic, lesser authentic when I got to college. Okay. And then when my dad passed away, that's when everything sh like shifted me back. So what was so, college like? You were, you were just trying to fit in a lot more. That is a big shift. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a big shift for a few years. Cause I, in high school, I was able to make myself cool. We'll talk okay. about that. One. Yeah, yeah I get it. I get That's it. A great dance story. Like, right. You know, the people in my hometown were wonderful people. And yes, I got made fun of when I got there, but I figured out how to stay myself and make friends with everybody. By the end of my senior year, I was friends with everybody, but I was still me. Right. And, okay. and then when I went to college though, I was automatically accepted by like, the best sorority or whatever it's all. Wow. Called. Interesting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everybody's sorority is the best sorority to them, but sure. perception wise, <laughs> it was like, that's the hard one to get into. Okay. And, and I went through rush as a, as a, as a dare from my sister. Cause she's like, you gotta just see what it's like, you know? And I was like, oh, this is all, I was, I, you know, stuck yes. my nose at it. I'm like, I'm not a sorority girl. This is not me. Right. You know, I was, uh, I came in like looking very just, Different. Than <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of like a the, the, bar, like okay. never wore makeup except for when I had to with performance. Like I was okay. definitely not like uh, uh, looking at like a sorority girl. Okay. And so my sister was like, "Just this will be fun. Like just see what it's like on the inside." You know? <laughs> Me like secret. you were going to be a spy. Right? <laughs> she, she, never, she wasn't in a sorority either. And okay. we were very, I looked up to her so much. And so she was always daring me to do stuff like this. And so I'm like, all right, I'll go. And I went through rush and I told the girls every time they'd try to sit me down and recruit me and give me that hard talk, I would tell them I'm not, I'm not pledging. I'm here to just see this charade. Like I'm not pledging. Okay. And so the final night, they gave me, uh, her name's Gabrielle Ruiz. She's on the CW's uh, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Her character's Valencia. She's, she was in In the Heights on Broadway. She's an amazing wow. performer. And a few other shows as well, If Then, and um, one with Ricky Martin. I'm forgetting it. But she's an amazing human. Okay. Well, she, <laughs> she got me on the last night, and she went straight to my heart, and she related to me. She sat me down on the couch. She related to me. She went straight to my heart. She, she talked to me about how these relationships have helped her within the dance program and the alumni chapter in New York city. And so she made it like practical, smart. And she also like went to the jugular. So <laughs> I was emotional jugular. Yes. I was completely blindsided. My last night of rush, I was like, what just happened? 
all of a sudden, did they just brainwash me? Is this what brainwashing is? You know? Right. And, um, and I told my sister. That's a that bigger I, conversation, the brainwashing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I told my sister that I pledged and she's like, hmm. uh, so then she would. She always teases. Well, she loves God. She had a chance to meet Gabrielle and she loves her. And, and Gabrielle really is amazing. My sorority sisters, I had many amazing. I'm not, I'm not dogging the sorority. It was a, there was a great group of girls to be associated with. So it's not all um, bad is what, what you're saying. No, no, but, <laughs> but you learned that. That's good. Yeah. So my sister I, still jokes. She's like, how's your $500 friend Gabby doing? <laughs> but, uh, so I, but, uh, but it wasn't, I want to be clear, it wasn't the sorority's fault. It was that I was automatically accepted with the cool crowd. And I started, you know, I didn't drink right away. And didn't uh, drink right it, away. Okay. Yeah. All right. It, that's, a, that's a nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it became like a, like a mission for some of the athletes and my sorority sisters to get me to drink. And oh, like the, right. the night that I drank was like a big event for everybody, which wow. was just crazy looking back on it. But anyways, that kind of start, started me on the journey of now really liking the association, liking the approval, liking the likes on Facebook, liking all of that. And I just got wrapped up in it until my, my uh, first semester of senior year when my father passed away. Wow. So. Okay. So you kind of did spiral into the rabbit hole of, um, I don't know. What, what do you call that? <laughs> uh, living on the surface, you know, right. I, right. Okay. Yeah, sure. Just, just living for the, living for the, living the for the likes, living the weekend, for the, likes. the like, yeah. the approval, the, the right. things that don't go deep, you know? Right. Right. Wow. Okay. But then you had but, the big wake up call. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So my okay. freshman, my first, my first semester, senior year, I get a call um, that my dad had cancer and, you know, right. a year before he had had a stroke, but he was doing better. And, but then we get the call, he has cancer. He probably only has a few weeks to live. Wow. And uh, I'll never forget where I was standing. I'll never forget the faces of the people that I was looking at. And they were looking at me as I was falling apart in the lobby of wow. my, my, uh, dance building. And, um, the Dean of my school was gracious. They refunded me my tuition that semester told me just go home. And oh, that's amazing. That amazing. is a gift. That, that was a, is gift. a gift. Yeah. Wow. And, um, I, no, I want to, uh, if, if, I mean, you know, that's not something that most people want to ask for, but one of the things that I would love to do is be there. Right when one or the other or both parents, I mm. want to be there for the whole dying event, beginning and soup to nuts. Um, mm. Cause I know it's sad and you're going to deal with the grief. Right. But there, I, I heard you say on another show that it's also simultaneously beautiful. Mm, right. Really, it is <laughs> right. I know. And it, I don't want to be morbid, but it's, I, we have this weird relationship as humans with, with the fact that we're going to die. <laughs> we don't, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to know about it. We just want to like basically just pretend it's not true until we have to face it. And you unfortunately or fortunately <clears throat> had an opportunity and or curse blessing, whatever you want to say to have to live through it pretty young. That's, it's hard and a gift. It's a hard gift, right? <laughs> Talk yeah. a little bit about what, what was beautiful about it. Just the fact that you got to be there and mm. feel those feels. Um, sorry that that happened to you, but talk, talk about the beautiful part because that's what most people miss, I think. You know, it was so beautiful. I, and that's a unique perspective to it have yeah. I think for our listeners to hear you say that that's probably getting them to think a lot right now. Right. Um, right. Because again, it's, you it's just giving them the dog tilt head. <laughs> 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 you, just, you just challenged a track that they've uh, yes. a thought track that they've had and, and might be creating a, a, a shift in it. Um, but it is beautiful. You right. know, I, uh, Unfortunately, I lost um, one of my close friends when I was 15 years old in a car accident. And that happened just like that. There yes. was no, 
There was no goodbyes. There was no uh, let's let's talk about the meaning of life. There was no uh, gratitude exchanges. It was just she's here. She's gone. And it's and like ripped. It's a yes, yes. And that torn. Process, Ouch. Yanked that grief yes. process was entirely different because well, that's trauma. So it's PTSD plus grief. That's what mm -hmm. that is. That's like mm -hmm. getting hit by a truck and, and then you wake up in your friend's dead. That's. Yep. The denial, disbelief, right. Right. moving into, okay, it's for real, you know, moving into the, 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 the falling apart moments. Then, I mean, but none of the exchanges that I got to have with my father took place with my friend, Amanda. Right. So getting to come home and be with him, it was a gift. And I'm so thankful to my alma mater, Oklahoma City University, the dean for graciously granting me that. And um, I would have gone home anyways, but very right. nice that they refunded the money for that semester. And, you know, it was just my family and me at home with my dad. Hospice had had brought him to our living room wow. and got set up comfortably. And we mm -hmm. had an amazing community in Gunnersville, Alabama, where I grew up and that surrounded our family during that time. And my father was a leader in the army. So there were people flying in from wow. all the places that, you know, he had worked or visited. And wow. uh, so we were surrounded by angels truly on earth. And, um, right. but, but those moments with my dad, you know, I, when you get to sit bedside with somebody who sees the light at the end of the tunnel, right. They almost are, are in contact with the other side at yeah. that moment. They're sort of like half here, half there. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, truly, truly, yeah, yeah. he, he, uh, he refused on both sides. Yeah. He, he refused morphine, which was wow. Very, which was crazy. That's brave. It was brave. in a lot of pain. Yeah. But he didn't want to hallucinate. So what okay. you just said, being in touch with the other side, he truly was. I and know. You can't, you I can't know. say he was hallucinating. No. Cause he wasn't on drugs. He was on the morphine. He right. wasn't on drugs. Right. And he saw things. He he saw people in the room. That he he told he said your grandfather's here playing his guitar, you oh. know. And you're like, whoa, you know, this yeah. is. And and then that last moment, which I know nobody wants to think about, but the moment when he actually passed. Um, if you haven't been with somebody when they died, it's you know there's a there's a gasp of breath typically that occurs in the body. Right. And, right. You know, he hadn't been able to sit up. He sat straight up in bed like a stiff board, had this gasp. His eyes were wide open and he has he had the most beautiful blue eyes. They were just so wide open. And it was like you saw that he saw and it was so peaceful. And you just saw this like, whoa, he just passed through. He just shifted. Wow. And after wow. he passed, <laughs> it was crazy. It was so supernatural. And as soon as he passed, everybody went to the body and I felt no need to go to his body. Right. I went out of respect and out of almost like this is what everybody in the room. Is right, doing. right, right. You have to you have to honor the social convention. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I felt I knew he's not in that body anymore. Right. And, and I felt, he, he left. I felt a presence around us. It mm. could have been him. It could have been God. But I just knew like dad's not in that body anymore. And right. I know exactly where he went. And yep. that piece is, you know, was everything. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. For you to be able to just be there and attend that and experience that. I read this whole book about this lady that was going around. Her book was sort of like a little bit of both. It was all the events around death. And now I'm going to have to go figure out what the name of the book and the author, but I'll do that in the show notes later. Oh, uh, she was a hospice care worker, right? Uh, don't, maybe it's possible. Okay. I, there's Bronnie Ware who, she was a hospice care worker. What was, was the like, name of the book? Uh, I don't know. Name. It was about the 10 regrets of people uh, dying. No, this is more about NDEs and that sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Which, I, the, yeah, but I mean, not obviously not everybody has an NDE. A lot of people die too, and she talked to. It was stories about from people that that it had your experience, mm. uh, like the whole thing about like what 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 more about <clears throat> 
how they change in the process of dying and mm -hmm. and sort of like how you can tell they're like conversing with this side and, and our side at the same time. And most people just sort of like call that babble and, you know, sort of like, well, their brain is addled right now because they're like on morphine, right? Mm -hmm. But in truth, well, my truth, <laughs> my personal truth is that they, they've sort of got a foot on each side. So absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. wow. That was, uh, that was a gift again, that you got to live through that hard though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the grief, you still have to grieve. You still, I think it probably takes a lot of sting out of a lot of the grief and loss, just knowing that he's over there mm -hmm. at peace. Yeah, right. it, it really does. And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for what happened, I guess, but at of the course. same time, I'm so grateful that I had a great father for 21 years of my life. And, mm -hmm. And I don't know if I would be who I am today if I didn't go through that experience. You, you know, that no, you piece would, of me right. died and it was one of those ego pieces. It was, it was, it brought me back to my authentic self and right. it, it took me deeper actually. So, um, you yeah. know, <clears throat> but I love to have my father here today. 1000%. Absolutely. Right. But I'm so thankful for the gift that he gave me. Right. And, process. So let's talk a little bit about how that the grief and the loss sort of like strip away the, the bullshit. <laughs> That's the best way I can say it. Right. Yeah. Um, it's almost like I, I'm going to try to make a weird comparison, but have you ever hung out with anybody that's been in recovery mm -hmm. and yeah. they, and they kind of like, they're just out and all of their filters have been unplugged and they're just they just talk to everybody about everything with yeah. unfiltered. It's like they're suddenly a grown up three year old. Right? <laughs> they they kind of have to dial it back. Right. But yeah. you get yeah. that, right? You, the, yeah. the grief loss transition thing has mm -hmm. a sort of similar effect to people. I think it's yeah. like all the BS is like, it's a, you can see it now. It's like you've been given glasses and you can see through the BS of the matrix almost. Mm hmm. Yeah, I have a zero bullshit tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. <laughs> right. And my husband does too. So it, there's two of us, you know. <laughs> right. So you guys are constantly <laughs> calling yourself on your own crap, right? So that's absolutely. So that's yeah. perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's and, uh, one definition people. of coaching, <laughs> right? Like that you pay you pay per uh, a coach to tell you what you what, don't want to hear from other people. <laughs> yep. yep. That's why it's, it's, it's like, worked well in our, our careers. <laughs> right. I'm going to give you all this money so you can tell me what I don't want to hear about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> much. Yeah. So let's talk about you and you. Well, actually, before we get into faith and maybe more about uh, Tony's journey with cancer, because that's got to be crazy. Um, mm -hmm. let's go back and, and lighten it up a little bit, maybe if we can. So talk a little bit about when your daughter interrupted the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's lighten it up a little. Okay. Yeah. So this just happened the other day and, oh, but, you know, I saw, I, I had this podcast scheduled and it was Tony and I were supposed to be, both of us were supposed to be present on it. And right. if I, if I have a commitment, I honor a commitment, um, no matter what's going on in life is so long as I, I can honor it. Right. right. Um, so he got called in for a last minute PET scan. They wanted to see where he was, how he was receiving uh, the treatment. So they were like last minute PET scan need to be there at seven o'clock in the morning, whatever. So he was not able to be on the podcast. Right. Understandably. Right. And, and uh, it was just me and, and my three and a half year old, we were staying with friends uh, cause we didn't have our rental house until June 1st. Wow. So we were just with, moved in. Okay. Just moved in. <laughs> gotcha. Arizonians, at least for the time being. Right. Um, we were staying with two wonderful friends of ours, uh, just been angels to us. But uh, the husband, his name is Jeff. He just had foot surgery and not like rinky dink foot surgery, like reconstructive, like you can't touch his foot or you right. he, he'd send him back to the hospital. He has wow. to be on his back for 80% of the day. Wow. Um, with his foot in the air. I mean, yeah. has a little scooter, but 
that's about it. Can't like Basically in other words, bathroom and that's it. Yes. So <laughs> it was pretty sweet to see my husband and Jeff have some bonding time on the couch for a few weeks together. And yes. Me and my friend Kim, we had our two girls that we would run around and play with, take care of our husbands. But this particular morning, Kim was working. Jeff was on the couch. My husband, Tony, was at, uh, at his PET scan. And Emerson, my daughter, my three and a half year old, was still asleep at nine o'clock in the morning. And so I'm like, oh, and that's when the podcast was scheduled. So I'm right. like, all right, I, I can get through this. And uh, I did give her a little bit of mel- melatonin the night before, hoping that it would <laughs> put her over the 10 a.m. mark. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I'm thinking, yeah, she, and she's, she can be a pretty heavy sleeper, especially I don't give her melatonin often when I give her melatonin, it does knock her out, you know, pretty hard. Yes. I'm thinking she's going to sleep through this. I've got this. So I set myself up in one of the guest bedrooms. I'm in a little corner trying to be a little quiet. And, uh, I told the host beforehand, Hey, here's the context of the situation. Fortunately, he was uh, wonderful and understanding. Um, but about nine 30, and if any of you hear the podcast, it's Joe Warren's your first hundred K podcast about halfway through, you hear a door open and you hear mommy <laughs> you don't, you don't hear anything after that because Joe paused it and we were able to put it together. But, okay. uh, <laughs> so I paused and I'm looking over my laptop at this like crazy haired, grumpy groggy three-year-old who's like i still have melatonin in me i'm tired but what are you doing where am i right now i could just tell like she is not going to be easy to right to get this to is not going to be off. five minutes this is not going to be a simple task right <laughs> so i look at her and i'm like okay all right i'll be right back joe so i take her and uh I try to I try to get her a few snacks and put her in the corner of the room and say, Emmy, I just have a meeting, 20 minutes. Can you give me 20 minutes? And so started, stopped. She was not having it, started crying. So I'm like, all right. I take her downstairs. Jeff's on the couch. He's like, how can I help you? Is there anything I can do? Yeah. And again, three and a half year old with a man who's had foot surgery and you can't touch his not a good combination. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling like a bad mommy now. <laughs> a bad friend. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you're, you just had foot surgery and you're being protective so nobody touches your foot. Here, take a three and a half year old who just woke up. Um, <laughs> so, just a trooper. <laughs> man. So I opened the I opened their freezer and I see this giant tub of cookies and cream bluebell ice cream. Oh and baby. We've been on a That's very baby crack. Yeah. <laughs> We've been very healthy this past year, especially recently. I've got her like drinking like green smoothies. smoothies now. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I'm like, I'm taking that ice cream. So I give her that ice cream. I sit her on the couch next to Jeff. I put on Frozen or some movie and I'm like, okay, just give me 20 minutes. And there she is. I just, I'm going up the stairs back to the guest bedroom and I see Jeff laying there, foot up in the air, and I see my three and a half year old with her nightgown all, you know, frazzled, her hair all frazzled. A giant, the, the tub of bluebell ice cream is like as big as her, like, ab, like her, her torso. Like wow. And a, I don't even put it in a bowl, and I just gave her. Wow. And she's got a shovel, and she's maybe hitting her mouth, a maybe not. And she, Oh, totally out of character for me. Uh, but it just, you know, I think people, you need to hear that stuff because life is, you know, it throws you curveballs and you don't know, you can't always, it, it's not always going to be the perfect response or solution. Right. You got to roll with it and you got to have some right. great. And it's not like I give my kid ice cream every morning. Come on. So there you go. You out, should save it for just that <laughs> opportunity, right? Just yeah. in case. Yeah. Just yeah. in case. That's awesome. So, Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> so great. So if any of you hear that podcast, you, you'll hear that moment. And Mommy. you'll now know behind the scenes and what yes. everyone's doing while I finished it out. So. Right. <laughs> so let's so, talk a little bit about, so did you grow up in the church? Talk a little bit about your faith. Mm, you know, yes. Thank you. Um, my faith's at a whole different level right now. Right. Did I grow up in the church? Yes. Is my mom a fierce, like dragon slaying prayer woman, 
a pioneer woman kind of lady. Absolutely. My mom, my mom lost two husbands to cancer. She is, wow, and she uh, has faith beyond reason. She's right. incredible. Um, so I grew up with her covering. I grew up with <clears throat> not really going on my own journey because I always felt like I had my mom to to protect me. I, I wore my mom's faith like a warm blanket during all of life's hard times, wow. losing my friend Amanda, right. anything that I went through. Uh, and then losing my dad, I, I, I went through my own journey and storm, but I, it was in the shelter of my mom's covering. Okay. So truthfully, I never really studied the Bible hard. Okay. I never really, I never really gave, um, I just said, you know, I have this feeling, I have this connection with the Holy spirit. I feel it. So I'm right. a believer. I'm good, but I didn't have any tools in my belt. I didn't have, I didn't have God's word to explain my faith really. Like I, I didn't have that arsenal. I wasn't building that inside of me. And so there was, there was a lot that I intellectually didn't understand, didn't know, didn't have words for. I just, I just was You were carried. just going it all by gut, right? Yeah. You were just gutting it out. You were gutting out faith. That's amazing. Yeah. I've never heard anyone say that before. That's yeah. awesome. And I had experiences to lean on and people would say, why are you a Christian? Well, because this happened to me when I was 15 and I couldn't explain it. And this happened when my dad died and I could, I, there was right. nothing but God, you know, to point to. So I just, I know God's real. You know, I, I went through in college, I took a world religions class. So I started to kind of question Jesus yep. sure, and whether or not he was the way right. to God. Sure. And I, I, I was torn up at the fact that there's, you know, there's All people. All these other that, religions, right. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're great people and they have right. great principles. And so how can he be the only way? Right. And I thought, right. well, maybe he's, maybe he was just this like, you know, and I'm, I'm being, nobody's ever heard me say this publicly. Like this okay. is being brutally honest. Like I, I, I've had all these thoughts, like maybe he was just this charismatic, uh, man who, right. who yes, did some amazing things and word got out and, spread all over the world. Sure. But maybe there were other char charismatic, wonderful men. And sure. maybe he was just, uh, you know, sort of like a prophet or a, you know, a disciple, but he can't be the only way, you know, um, until recently <laughs> in the okay. past and the, <clears throat> this journey that I've been on for the last year has completely transformed me and built my faith at a different level. And I'm, I'm blindsided. I, 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 look back at what I thought I knew or whatever. And I had no idea, you know, I, okay. I, I, um, now like there's, there's no question without a shadow of a doubt for me and my faith that he is the only way. And okay. I've had so many things happen. Um, that I just, if I, I couldn't explain, you couldn't, you couldn't, science can't explain it. Um, there's no, it, it's undoubtedly God working in our lives and right. giving us, signs giving us uh words you know i'll have a word experiences come. yes yes right. i had a word come to me the other night in prayer and uh a friend there's a facebook page that some people are posting like their prayers and things for for us during the season and uh it's actually not that busy and so when i go on there i'll see whatever whoever posted for the day and uh, a friend of mine, Sarah, had posted the same exact word that I received at the same time that I received it. Sure. So when I was in, when I was praying and I heard the word come to me and, you know, sometimes you question like, was that my imagination or was that God? You should and, question that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should. Well, I've learned, I've learned that like, if I, you'll know. Uh, to sanctify my imagination and I turn it over to him, then, then what at that time, what does come through is him because I've given him the authority to do that. Uh -huh. so, you learned something. Yeah. I'm learning so much. Yeah. <laughs> so much well, there's a spiritual, even outside of the Christian belief system, there's this, um, it's one of my pillars of belief is uh, mm -hmm. free will is absolute. God made mm -hmm. it that way. Your personal human free will, he can't violate. So that, that that's one yes. of those, you believe that, right? <laughs> I don't think that's in the Bible, but I, I believe that through experience. Now I read it too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, but I put my own paraphrase and spin on it, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's fun that you came to that conclusion. 
yeah. for an experience, a personal experience. Yes. Not reading I, a book or praying, but or praying, but experiencing God, which I think is pretty rare these days. I think so too. Yeah. I, I'm, my eyes are now open. It's like I have one foot in the world and one foot in the spiritual realm. I see both right. sides right. now and and I you know, and it, it's so clear, it's so present. And, you know, I, for me, it's unique. Well, for me, it's, yeah, I, I've always been a do it yourselfer. I think like my whole <laughs> life, yeah. whether it's spirituality or it's business, it's like, I'd rather just do it myself. You know, I don't need uh-huh. to ask for this. I don't need to ask other people for this. Uh-huh. Let me just do it myself. So I've DIY'd my faith journey. <laughs> DIY'd everything. Yeah, me too. I, Yep. leaned on my own understanding yep. <laughs> and, and, uh, you, you know, need help though. You, you know, you yeah, probably I, figured that out. <laughs> well, this, this particular, uh, scenario. So for, for those of you that are listening, you know, just to give you some context, my husband's journey, it, it's going to be one of the most powerful test, uh, test of cancer testimonies that's out there. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's defying, it's about defying statistics, defying the odds, defying right. what some, I, I brought together the best doctors in the nation for his cancer, for, for wow. non spinoma including the doctor who cured Lance Armstrong, Dr. Lawrence Einhorn. I brought them together. I paid wow. them the wow. bait. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You I are, paid you them are leaving no <laughs> stone unturned. So no. I, if, if things go south again, call me back. I have uh, other ideas, but keep going. Sorry. (laughs) So I, I went on this journey where I was like, you know, and here, talk about, talk about like a chain of events years ago when I first started, uh, speaking and doing things, I, I, you know, publicly, one of the things that I used to always say when I would talk about the journey that I was on is that God forbid any one of my family members ever got sick again, I was going to do whatever I had to do to put myself in a financial position to get the best doctor in the room right. because I experienced some of that with my dad. There were some malpractice things that occurred with my dad. Okay. And so that's what piss sent you me. off. Yes. It, yes. And that's what's <laughs> like that's the righteous anger. Yeah. Well, wow. Exactly. Okay. That's what got me motivated financially. I was never motivated financially before then. I was okay. an artist we can starve and we're good. Yeah. Um, so right. that's me on this. No, I'm resources. I'm building resources. I'm building because right. that, yeah, that catapulted me there. So, um, so now here I am, I'm vetting the world's top doctors for my husband's particular situation. Mm-hmm. And we are, I'm paying them to debate. You have to pay them thousands of dollars just for their opinions, some wow. of them. And, and so that we could choose who we felt was the best doctor for his case at this point. Yeah. So that'll give you, without me giving you all the details, without telling me having to tell you their bedside manner and the things they said to me about being a mom of a three and a half year old, I don't need to get into those details. Use your imagination. You can guess what they said. Um, I, it sent me on this, it catapulted me into this faith journey where my capacity was no longer enough. Do it yourself was not going to work. Right. I couldn't do this myself. No, no. You can't cure cancer with, with thoughts and prayers. No, no, you need doctors and money. And I couldn't even, I have a high capacity. I have a high tolerance. I'm able to, uh, that's one of the things my friend, my, a good friend of mine, uh, Danica says about me is she's like, you have stamina. She always reminds me. You have, you have you the do, stamina. Have stamina. Right. Yes. Yeah, so it's a simple thing, but she'll remind me sometimes like you've got the stamina for this. But for this particular season at this particular time, that's very sensitive. I don't. And so the only thing that's carrying me right now is, is the Holy Spirit. Okay. And wow. I would, you know, to go from being a lukewarm Christian in a sense of, you know, yeah, I believe in God and Jesus and I believe in love and whatever. Right, right, right. Now I'm like, he is showing me, <laughs> he's me through things. I'm yeah. just putting, you know, I'm just putting my body in places and he's taking the reins. And, mm. you know, I mean, here's something crazy that happened the other day. 
I know this might be a super long tangent for you, but That's this okay. is super I have long to- tangents is the other name of this show. So you're good. <laughs> uh, we just, just titled this one super long tangent by Francis Papalardo. Okay. Um, so, uh, so you do, you believe in signs, Jeff? I do. Yes. Uh, so, Synchronicities. Yes. So, uh, I've had a lot, I've had a lot from my three and a half year old having dreams, which is crazy to me that she can have prophetic dreams and tell me about them in the most timely moments um, to people having confirmations in other parts of the nation or the world to confirm Mm -hmm. something I'm experiencing or something that's happening the next day or whatever. I mean, just lots of things have happened. But when you start fighting in the spiritual realm uh, through prayer, you know, things do start happening in your life in terms of you, you know, uh, not only is God fighting on your behalf or working on your behalf, um, because now you've now, when you pray certain prayers and things, you give him full authority to fight on your behalf. Like you said before, Jeff, he's not going to fight on your behalf if you don't ask him. Right. I thought, I thought he just did. Like, I was like, I'm good. Like it's like faith on autopilot doesn't work that way. No. My mom made me feel so safe growing up. I was like, I, I, I think, I think we, as children, we get some passes, pass points, like, yes. you know, occasionally yeah. you'll get a guardian angel pulling you off the ledge sort of thing. Uh, yeah. But once you, you, you sort of graduate into adulthood, the, the training wheels are off, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And that's the key word occasionally, because I thought it was all the time. Like, right. I, thought, I pretty much thought that like, uh, Michael I, I was could just magoo outside. myself through this world. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, I probably got Michael and Gabriel and, you know, yeah, all these they're all here. They're, they're they my hang, guys. They're, they hang with that's me. That's right. I didn't, I didn't realize they were, uh, they weren't, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, omnipresent or omniscient. Uh, omniscient One of the, those. Not yeah. always around. Always. Yeah. They come and go. You have to ask Correct. for that. Right. Correct. <laughs> so anyway, since we've opened up the authority of God to work into our life and fight on our behalf, things happen in the physical that you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What right, is right, that? And right. You know, that's, that's from the demonic realm. That's from spiritual realm. Mm, and so yes. the, the, the devil, this is going to be crazy for my audience. Cause they're not used to hearing me talking like this. The, the devil, um, has been messing trying he tries to mess with you and god and whatever god increases in your life the devil also increases now the devil's amateur he's amateur so he's not gonna get very far but he's gonna try to mess with your head he's gonna try to manipulate he can't get inside of you but he can manipulate things around you to try to to try to screw with your thoughts the temptations the yes right yeah so so the other desert yes yeah so the other forty nights yikes (laughs) <laughs> okay. We're in a freaking desert. Like yeah. we, are we like to be near the ocean. We were getting ready to move from New York to Florida yeah. or somewhere by the beach. And you're going to do more than are, 40 days. Sorry. <laughs> yes. And here we are in the freaking desert and God. And, and so it's just, it's fascinating. We're in the desert. And, and for my husband in particular, all of his, things that he would naturally go to for comfort, like let's say bad food or surfing or, you know, uh, even, even watching movies because now those are taken away because how many movies can you watch when you're at bed on bed rest basically for, for months, Mm, you know, everything's been stripped away from us for creature comforts other than, you know, God, that it's, it's, it's wild. And we're in the Mm. freaking, which is how symbolic can you be? So I opened my door (laughs) He had my front door the other day okay. and this is just one of many signs like, but I opened my front door and I have some packages. Now the UPS man had just walked up, dropped the packages effortlessly and walked back to his truck. Now I opened the door, not thinking anything, pick up all the packages. There were probably four or five. The last package that I pick up, there's a king snake, a California king snake. It is about four feet long, very like, like I would say maybe three inches in diameter. I mean, he was huge behind this package. Now, if you don't know what a California king snake looks like, it's a black snake with yellow bands. It is scary looking. He is scary looking. But I, so I caught my breath a little bit, took my breath away. <laughs> yeah. I hate snakes. Yes. And, um, and he just peacefully 
slithered away as I brought the, as I picked up, I had the package in my arms. You've had your freak out moment. Internally, Internally. but like it took my breath away, but I also just had this wonder, this awe as he slithered away. And I was like, that's captivating. He's, he's, he looks really mean, but he also looks beautiful. So now I'm like, what was that? Okay. So I text my landlord and I'm like, Hey, I just saw this four foot snake. How often do you see snakes in your yard? And what do I need to know about your wildlife? And she goes, that's crazy. She said, she's only seen three snakes in 30 years of living here and never, never a California King. So I Google the snake because I don't know that it's a California King right, snake. Right, right. <clears throat> yes. That thing definitely looked like it could kill me. So I Google it and um, wow. Wow. and I'm trying to find the markings because it wasn't a garden snake that has the yellow right. stripe down the back. It was yellow bands. Well, when you when you look up, when I figured out what it was and I looked it up, a California king snake signif- signals protection. So it oh. kills it kills the bad snakes. It kills rattlesnakes. Oh, wow. So if you talk to an Arizonian and you're like, hey, so there's a four foot California king snake right at my front door, they'll be like, that's the snake you want. Be nice to those snakes. So, that's <laughs> so amazing. Oh. So here, <laughs> yeah. So here it was. And this is this is now me seeing through a spiritual lens the 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 devil might have been sending me something to freak me out because Francis before didn't have the wisdom and the discernment to see things this way and I would have just said oh, I saw a scary snake right oh my gosh and that nobody go outside for a week right right, right. he, he we knows have to move <laughs> he, knows, yeah, he knows I hate snakes and so he's he's trying to figure out how to uh, paralyze us through our fears but wisdom and discernment tells me that snake equals protection. And so there he is. Look at that amateur trying to send me a snake to freak me out. But it was a freaking snake of protection. That's so amazing. all the things, all the tricks that he tries to play, he's not going to win. Right. He can only get so far. So, wow. um, you know, everything from that to my daughter having dreams where she was randomly like G- Jesus took me to the playground and he told me that. He, he got rid of all the monsters. I'm like, I have that on video. She's like, yeah, Jesus said all the monsters have gone away. And, wow. and he said, do not be afraid. I mean, there's, that's just the planets and the stars. This is hilarious. She goes, it's just the planets and the stars. And then she pauses and she goes, and the aliens. <laughs> and I'm like, has she ever heard the word aliens? I've never said the word aliens. Where did, she doesn't. She goes, but no more monsters than me. No more monsters. She prayed that she had that dream the night after I had some serious like prayer things going on where I was casting things out and binding out spirits and all that stuff. So anyways, wow. your, your listeners are going crazy right now. It's been <laughs> happening. But, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> this, this, this audience is very woo-woo friendly, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> very faith-based, yes. Good, good. Yeah, because, I mean, it was just like – I have so much like right the, there with you. you yes. I have a whole journal right now of these things that have been happening. See, so you're in it. You are so in it right mm-hmm. now. You are like, I remember this movie with uh, Jeff Bridges. He was this like aging country star. And uh, he was sort of like going from gig to gig and kind of like on the back end of his career. And he was calling from a phone booth in the middle of the desert. It was like 115 degrees. And he was like, I'm out in it <laughs> on the phone with his girlfriend. Yeah, that's where yeah. you're at. You're out in it. <laughs> I mean, spiritually, physically, and metaphorically in the spiritual sense, you're in it. I'm kind of out of it. You know, I went through my stuff and now I'm on the backside, the back nine of the spiritual journey, which is amazing in and of itself, but completely different from where you're at. But I've been where you're at. Mm-hmm. Um, not as scary, not as dramatic, but I've been where you're at, where yeah. I've been through all of those, you know, seeing the signs and the synchronicities and reading the books and all the books and questioning everything and coming to new conclusions. And um, I landed on... Um, like, uh, have you ever heard of the Course in Miracles or a Course in Miracles? Mm, like a course, like a, a college. It's, it's a name of a book. 
Okay, no, I haven't. A heard Course of it. in Miracles. Anyway, okay. it's it's one of my favorites. Okay, if you want to ever you stick your head yeah. in a spiritual bucket, um, it's in it. Let's keep going. Uh, yeah, the more bucket the better. Let's one go. of the one of the favorite things that that came out of that was you don't know what to do. You don't have to know what to do or say for a miracle mm. to happen through you. You just mm. have to show up and mm. believe it can happen. Right. So I, for whatever reason, I thought that was appropriate for you now. Cause it it's seems, so appropriate. <laughs> it's so appropriate. you know why? No, oh, man. no, but I think you do. <laughs> oh man, It's so appropriate because I'm a, I'm a DIYer. I'm a do it yourself. I'm a God. Yeah. Give me, give me, give me the course. Give me the roadmap. I will go, I'll pray all the deliverance prayers. I'll cast out all the demons. I'll do whatever I have to do. God, like give me, I'm, I'm a, I'm a worker. So I'm mm. asking him for instruction and I've been right. doing it and doing it and doing it. And you know what? The other night I cried out to him and I put my daughter to sleep and she was passed out. And so I cried out to him by her bedside as I was praying. And I was just saying, Hey, you know, let me, let me intercede more, give me more to do, show me more things I can do. In other words, like <clears throat> just the, I'll pray whatever prayers I have to pray. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever I'll I'll, I'll fast, I'll sacrifice. I'll do whatever I have to do. Let me intercede more. And, um, I heard his voice and he said, and you're hearing <laughs> that's awesome. It was a UPS man yes. who effortlessly walked by the snake the other day and didn't see it. Um, but I heard his voice and he said, my child rest, rest, my child, my child, rest, rest, my child. Yes. And that, that's what I told you when my friend on the Facebook group, cause I saw, I checked it later and it said 19 minutes ago, Sarah posted, uh, I forget exactly how she phrased it, but it was very similar. It was rest my child. And she said, I heard this when I was praying and I felt it was a word, uh, for Tony and Francis and, right. um, and I text her and I said, you have no idea. And that was confirmation. I, you heard it or you posted it when I heard it. Yeah. And, um, and so for me, what that means, and since I accepted those words, I took a little bit of a break from, you do need to take a break yeah. from the reading and the trying and the striving. Yeah. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to rest, which is not, which is not, not easy. Natural. It's not easy to do. No natural for me no, but natural for science can help you this here science can help you here because how, do you have any relatives that like when they get stressed they like cook like a crazy person or maybe they vacuum mm -hmm. the house when it doesn't need yep. to be right sometimes you just need that you need a distraction yeah. right yeah i totally yeah. get that you know yeah. always uh, it, when you're where you're at the number one thing is take it easy on you mm. Right. Give yourself a break as much as possible. Trust me, you're going to have a lot of shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need to rest up and recharge but, those batteries. I know it, it's insane, but that's it's true. It's true. And that's why what you just said, because I, I, I accepted the words. I fell asleep so peacefully that night. I, right. I wore the Holy Spirit like a warm blanket and nice. I've, I've been resting. That was just two days ago. And, um, and then yesterday I was like, all right, I got to do some stuff around the house, like unnecessary things that I didn't have to do. <laughs> right. Unpack us more. I just need to unpack us more or whatever. You needed and, some distraction and activity. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And I dropped the big box on my toe and I oh. was freaking hurt and I'm on the couch and I'm like, oh, I have an ice pack on. And then I hear the words, rest my child again in my head. And I was like, oh, you got me. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to, you know, that's how those it goes. Have to happen, but yeah, that's um, how it goes. But, but you just saying that just now, you just said to me, sometimes all you need to do for a miracle is just to show up and believe it. You don't and have so to know what to do or say, right? So the, yeah. that, that happened to me while I was still active duty Air Force guy and I was like going through some very stressful shit in the office, right? Mm. And people would be walking up to me and asking me questions that I have no idea what the answer is <laughs> every day. And I tried that, right? I just tried that. I was just got quiet, right? 
And mm-hmm. in, in that moment, I just decided, oh, right, that's right. I don't have to know what to say. I don't have to know what to do. I just sat there and I didn't say anything. I, and I just looked at the guy talking to me. Mm. Right? Wow. Yeah. And he walked away. <laughs> <laughs> I went, ha, ah, that works. <laughs> oh. Yeah, sometimes yeah. silence is the best answer. Mm. And yeah, I think the only thing you do have to do is you do have to give authority over. You do have to, what we talked about before, like he's not going to interfere. Think, uh, yeah, it's also like faith that the words will come. Faith yeah. Faith that, that yeah. you'll know what to do. But you don't have to know the answer before you get to the moment. You yes. just have to be in the moment and if you don't know the answer, ask. Yeah. Have you ever done that? I just did that the other day. I was mm-hmm. like trying to fall asleep at like four o'clock in the morning for another hour before I get up for work. Mm-hmm. And I was having this really stupid conversation with myself about why I can never remember how long I've been married. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to ask. I was like, why can't I remember how long I've been married? And I'm always embarrassed. And I went through this whole long thing about teaching myself this shortcut. Take the current year, right? It's 2021 and add seven. If you Mm. always add seven to the current year, you'll always be right. But it took me a half an hour in my head (laughs) talking to myself, right? There was this guy asking questions and another guy with the answers. (laughs) Yeah. It's like you have two brains. You just sometimes. have to ask. You, you have just to just have ask. to ask. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. And just show up and just ask and let him let him work through you. Let him give you the answers. So, uh, Francis, I just called you Tony. That's awesome. So, Francis, <laughs> before okay. as we wrap up, let's get this story of the fifth grade dance. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because well, we said we would. And then we can wrap up. We would. We, would. we we're going to honor. Yeah. Gonna, so yes. on this commitment here. So fifth grade dance, you know, I, uh, I was asked to the fifth grade dance. This was during that journey of getting made fun of. I had just moved to Alabama. Okay. I had a crush on this boy. I told my mom about it. Thought he was really cute. My mom worked at the church with his mom. She told his mom, his mom made him ask me, <laughs> which Ooh. is a great yeah. Great way to start out, you know. Yeah. Ouch. So uh, he he took me to the dance, and the whole time he didn't really want to take. He didn't want to take me, right? He was a cool kid, right? And so he uh, he just avoided me the entire dance. And anytime I would walk up to him, he would him and his friends would giggle, and you know. Yeah. So it was just it was that, until that finally school kind of thing. So did you yeah. know like right away that this the the joke was on you? But I did. I did. Yeah. And it it stung pretty hard. Um, but again, I somehow knew like, it's not me. It's, it's, it's the fact that I'm new here, you know, it's more than somehow I knew that it didn't change how much it hurt. It didn't change that, uh, you know, whatever, but I just somehow knew it was like, all right, almost became a challenge. Like I'm going to make these people like me. <laughs> by my senior year, that that kid asked me out on a date, and it felt really good to say no. Um, That's although, awesome. Although we became friends, and we were friends at the time, I was like, I'm definitely not saying yes to you. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Yeah. You screwed that up. <laughs> Some bridges you can't rebuild. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That was all character building for me. I'm, yeah. I'm thankful. I'm so thankful that that was part of my journey. It, it got me to not live in a box. It got me to be friends with everyone and, and, uh, yeah. to avoid those traps of thinking the same way. No, that they, totally. They thinking, yeah. I went through something like that. I don't know if it was fifth grade, but it was pre middle school. So somewhere between K and five, I don't know specifically, but I got invited to a cool kid's birthday party with his other cool mm-hmm. kid friends. It was mm-hmm. a sleepover and, and I was the butt of the joke. So then we played games and it was like, uh, it was like the punishment for getting it wrong was drinking water and I was getting it wrong a lot and they wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. That's sort of like the elementary school boy kind of trap. Mm -hmm. They wanted Mm -hmm. somebody to laugh at. So when I threatened to pee on the floor in the the living room, they let me go. (laughs) Uh, Good for you that you, you stood up. 
<laughs> yes. I don't know. I'm thinking, what would I I, I guess I would have just held it yeah. painfully, you know, yeah. but you actually I wasn't told having me, it. Really? <laughs> really? You're going to do this to me? I want to pee on your floor. Exactly. In fact, I'm going to pee on the carpet. Yes. You're going to have to clean it up. Yeah. Better Explain that. that to your mother. <laughs> and they're like, Who are you? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got to the point of whipping it out. And they're like, okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh you were like you were like hey hey uh, hey jokers go ahead fall asleep fall asleep right. exactly <laughs> oh no 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 it wasn't time to go to bed yet but it kind of put a damper on the evening and mm. <laughs> there oh, were many man. laughs after that <laughs> they're like yeah we're not messing with jeff again right right. Right. right right that was right. probably one of the very few things that i i remember from elementary school story-wise anyway <laughs> Oh, okay. man. Yeah. I mean, it scars you, right? A, a little bit yeah. of your, yeah. Oh, they were. Now I, I come up with this phrase whenever I, I see bad behavior in humans. I mm. just, it's, it's snarky and true at the same time. I like that. It's like humans are awesome, right? Because <laughs> they are both yeah. ways. They're both ways. They're awesome. So whenever they do something really horribly shitty, humans are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, I love that. That's yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna remember, I'm gonna hear your voice now. Uh, you. Humans are awesome. <laughs> There's Jeff. <laughs> There's Jeff. All right. So talk a little bit about how folks can reach out and touch Tony and Francis Pabalardo. Um, I sure. know you're at customize your customize your dot life. Yep. Okay. And you're on the socials right and everybody else. Yeah, I think, you know, I think the easiest way if anybody wants to get in touch is just find us on Instagram, Francis gotcha. Papalardo underscore and Tony Papalardo underscore. Okay. Um, and then from there you have our link tree. It's in our bio. And then you can see recent podcasts. You can see uh, our website. The green you know. smoothies. Yeah. Yeah. The green All smoothies. the baby pics. <laughs> I, I did a little cyber stalking. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the easiest way to get in touch, you know, um, be happy to connect with anybody who wants to connect with us. Francis, this has been, um, pretty cool. Probably top five. Oh, yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Amazingly open. So everybody listening to this show, if you want to be on this show, be like Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I am yes. wide, open. wide open, torn open, and yeah. maybe good, maybe bad. All right, so <laughs> let's let's wrap it up and say goodbye, and then uh, we'll chat a little bit and have a nice day. Okay. All right, talk to you later. Have a good one. Thanks for taking the time to ride along with us on another episode of Vroom Vroom Veer. For podcast info and show notes, be sure to head over to vvveer.com. That's triple V-double-E-R.com. Man, that's fun to say. And we'll catch up with you next time here on Vroom Vroom Veer. Vroom Vroom Veer.